Now, in the last lesson, we looked at how we could change the display property using CSS in order to change the way that our elements stacked against each other. Now, in this lesson, we're going to explore CSS positioning in more detail. But before we do so, the first thing we have to realize is that even without CSS, your HTML elements already has predefined rules for how it should be displayed on your web page, even if you don't have any CSS. And we have to understand how things get positioned by default before we can go on to change it, to bend it to our will without getting confused and getting stuck. So let's take a look at these rules. So let's go through those rules quickly. The first rule is that content is everything. Now we know that inline elements only take up as much width and as much height as the content. So if you have a span that contains a long word, then it has a large width. If you have a span that contains a short word, then it has a short width. And with block elements, even though they take up 100% of the width, the height is still determined by the content. So if you have a really super large font for your H1 or for your paragraph, then that box model is going to take up a lot more height than if it was a smaller font. So your content is the first thing that determines how large things get displayed and what the height and the width will be. And this is despite any CSS. The next thing to remember is that the order of your elements on screen comes from your HTML code. So in this case, we have an H1, three paragraphs, then an image. This is how we've written our code in our HTML file. And this is how it gets rendered in that order. Now, if we change the order and put the image at the top of our code file, then our website is going to display in a corresponding way. So the default layout order is determined by your code. The third thing we need to know is that children sit on top of parents. What do I mean by that? So here on the left, I've got a div that's colored in red. Now, if inside this div, I add an H1 with some text, then that H1 is going to be on top of the div. So it's more towards the viewer and away from the screen. So this kind of introduces the concept of the Z index. We know that on screen, we have an X and a Y axis, but there's also a Z axis and that determines which element will be displayed on the other one. Because if in this case, the div was in front of the H1, then we wouldn't see the H1 at all. So by default, all HTML elements that are children, they will sit on top of the parent element. So if we modify this code even further, and we add a span nested inside that H1, then the word inside the span is going to be on top of the H1. So we have three elements here on the screen so far, a div, an H1, and a span. And going from the screen towards the viewer, we first have the div, then the H1, then the span. From top to the bottom of the hierarchy, it comes closer and closer towards the viewer. So these three are the default rules for how things get rendered on screen just based on your HTML code. Now, you can also set a CSS property, which is the position property, in order to position elements on screen the way that you want it to, instead of just going along with the default layout. And in most cases, you're gonna want to make changes to the default layout. So let's look at some of the ways in which we can change this position property. Now, these are the four that I'm going to talk about. And the first one, the static position, we've actually already talked about it. All HTML elements are static in their position by default. And static just means go along with the HTML rules and keep to the default HTML flow. And that is what we see when we just have HTML without any CSS, or if we don't change this position property at all. Now, the next one is called the relative positioning. And what this allows us to do is to position 
the element that we select relative to how it would have been positioned had it been static. So in this case, on the left, we've got our bacon fan site, and this is just the normal HTML flow. The image is being shown to the left, and it's below all the other elements, abiding by those three rules for HTML flow that we mentioned before. Now, if we select that image element and we change its position property to relative instead of static, which is the default, remember, and in addition to that, we say it should be pushed 30 pixels from the left of the previous position. This is how our image will end up being positioned. So whereas the left edge of our image used to be here, and that would have been its natural position abiding by the HTML flow, now we're saying give that image 30 pixels of space between its left edge and where the left edge used to be. And there's four of these coordinate properties, the top, the bottom, the left, and the right. And we can set values for them in order to determine how we want to move our element. So let's say that we've got a image that is positioned using relative layout. Then we set the top coordinate property to 20 pixels. That means it will get moved down by 20 pixels. And if we change the left property 20 pixels, then it'll get pushed right 20 pixels. If we change the right property 20 pixels, it'll get pushed left 20 pixels and the bottom property as well. Now there's two important things that you have to remember when you're dealing with relative positioning. The first thing is that when you move an element that has a relative position, say in this case, we're pushing it down by 50 pixels. It doesn't affect the position of anything else on screen. It's as if the old position was kept and everything else just flows around it as if it was never moved. It's almost like this element left the ghost of itself where it used to be in order for all the other elements to keep their own positions. Now, the other thing to remember is that when we change the coordinate properties, for example, in this case, we're saying make the top coordinate property for this relatively positioned image 50 pixels. What that really means is that we're taking the top of where that image used to be and we're giving it a 50 pixel margin from the top of our current image. So if you think back to the box model, when we spoke about margins, this is the best way of thinking about these coordinates because very often students tend to ask, if it's top 50, why is it not going up by 50? And why is it instead going down? And what is it top relative to? So if you get confused, have a look back at this video. So inside this code pen, I've created three divs that are colored red, blue, and yellow. And they each have a height of 100 pixels and a width of 100 pixels. So essentially three squares inside a body element. I want to show you what changing the red divs position from static, which it currently is by default, to relative does. Now, by itself, changing this position property does nothing. It only starts doing something when you use one of the coordinate properties like left. So let's push it 20 pixels from the left. You can see that it just got nudged 20 pixels from the left of where it used to be. Now I can also move it all the way to the right by saying something like left 600 pixels. So it's now got a margin between the left edge of where it used to be and the current left edge of 600 pixels. Now, if I say right 200 pixels, can you predict what will happen to my red square? So let's take a look, see if you got it right. So our red square has completely disappeared off the screen. Now, why is that? Well, because the previous right edge was here. 
and to have a margin between the current right edge and the previous right edge of 200 pixels pushes our red square all the way over to the left that you can't see it anymore. Now, some people might have thought that by saying right 200 pixels, then it should be somewhere around here because this is the right edge of the screen. But as we mentioned, the relative positioning is relative to where the element would have been displayed if it was just following the natural HTML flow. So it would have been here. And now there's a margin between its previous right edge and its current right edge of 200 pixels. But remember, as we said, that the relative positioning doesn't affect any other element on screen. So if I said top 50 pixels, it pushes it down by 50 pixels, but it doesn't affect the layout of any other element on screen. It doesn't, for example, push this blue square downwards or any other element. It's as if the ghost of the red squares past has stayed where it used to be. And it's only this newer version that's being moved around. So there's a lot of new concepts here. And before we move on, I just want to make sure that you're comfortable with this idea of relative positioning. So as a challenge, I want you to change the display property of the blue and the yellow squares so that they will show up in a row where we've got the red square, the blue square and the yellow square. And then I want you to move the red square to the right of the yellow square. And this is what you should end up with. Now, don't worry too much about the gaps between the squares. It's more important that you get the order right. So they're all on the same line and it's blue, then yellow, then red. And you should be able to see most of the square. All right, so did you manage to do it? So the first thing that we needed to change was the display property of all three elements. So we're gonna change it to inline block so that we can still change its width, but also have them show up in line. So let's add that line of code to all three divs. So now they're in the same line. So I wanna get rid of this top and make them line up properly. But I now want to nudge the blue square to the position of the red square. So I'm going to make its position relative to where it should be. And I'm going to give it a right margin of 100 pixels. And I'm going to do the same thing to our yellow square. So I'm going to change its position to relative and also give it a right margin from its previous position to 100 pixels. And that nudges it left. Now, the final thing I have to do is to move the red square to the right by 200 pixels. So I can change its left margin to 200 pixels and that moves the red square over to the right. Now, the reason why the spaces between our squares are inconsistent is because by making it an inline block, there's actually a little bit of space that gets added in by the browser. So we can see that if we get rid of all the position code, there's just a slight smudge of a space between each of the inline block elements. And that's what's making our gap slightly inconsistent. But the important thing is that you manage to get the order of the blocks correct. So if you manage to get the squares to line up in this order, then that means you've successfully completed the challenge. In order to get the position more fine tuned, we're going to look at different ways in the future. Now, in the next lesson, I want to show you another way of positioning your elements by using absolute positions. So for all of that and more, I'll see you on the next lesson.